Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to the lair of the chipmunk. No, that's not right. Nest. Nest. Do chipmunks have nests? We'll say nest. Welcome back to the chipmunk nest. Okay. So for all my focusing on different kinds of stories, what I've been focusing on mainly lately are books. And it occurred to me, you know how books and stories, they get awarded prizes or you can send them into contests and get prizes or hopefully get prizes. You see the medals on the books all the time. What's that all about? What are those medals for? What are all the contests that are out there? Well, maybe not all the contests. I don't have room in the video for all the contests. There are a lot of contests out there. I thought I'd go ahead and just cover some of the main ones because maybe you're wondering about it just like I was, or maybe if you weren't, you are now. I will put up a list of all the contests that I could find, all the possible literature awards. I'll put them up at the end of this video and you will see why I did not cover all of them, but there will be a list if one sounds interesting, you know, you can look it up. Again, this list is just going to cover the main literary awards. I'm going to start with the Newbery Award. Newbery has one R in it, so if you're looking it up, one R. The Newbery Medal is given by the Association for Library Service to Children. It is given to the most distinguished contributions to American literature for children. The Newbery Medal was named after John Newbery, who lived from 1713 to 1767. He was an English publisher who was considered to be the first, making children's literature a sustainable and profitable market. So not the first kids lit out there, but the first that was profitable. He was apprenticed to a local printer at age 16, eventually came into co-ownership of the business. In keeping with the ideas of the time, most of the kids' books he published worked on themes of self-improvement after the teachings of John Locke. He even published a series of science books, including the Newtonian system of philosophy adapted to the capacities of young gentlemen and ladies. Kind of just rolls off the tongue there. The medal was created in 1922 by the ALA, or American Library Association, and it was the first children's book award in the world. The winner is selected every winter by committee, and not only does the book get emblazoned with a representation of the medal on its cover, but the author gets a physical bronze medal, the design and makeup of which have not changed over the years. One side of the medal has an inscription above, the other one side of the medal has an inscription above, up on the top, and the other side shows an author presenting their work to two children. Besides the medal, there are honorable mention winners called Newbery Honor Books. Laura Ingalls Wilder, for example, received five honors without ever winning a medal. As to winners, the first winner of the award was The Story of Mankind by Hendrik Willem Van Loon. And as of this airing, the most recent winner for 2024 was The Eyes and the Impossible by Dave Eggers. There has been criticism of this award uh, by it seeming to be for books that are so literary that most kids do not, in fact, want to read them. <laughs> Next up, the Caldecott Medal. The Randolph Caldecott Medal recognizes the most distinguished American picture book for children. It is also awarded by the Association for Library Service to Children. It was first proposed by Frederick Melcher, who also came up with the Newbery Award, in 1937. And it was named after the English illustrator Randolph Caldecott. You may have seen his work. He was born in 1846 and lived only 40 years to 1886. He drew mostly animals from a young age. At age 15, he left school to find work as a clerk. And the same year, his drawing of a major fire in the city appeared in the Illustrated London News. While clerking, he went to night school to pursue his art. Many more of his drawings began to be published in the newspapers. So, encouraged, he quit his job at age 26 and became a successful magazine illustrator. A picture of his was exhibited at the Royal Manchester Institute, and in, later another picture was exhibited at the Royal Academy. Soon after, in 1877, he was commissioned for pictures for a couple of children's Christmas nursery rhyme books. The books were a success. He then did illustrations for Washington Irving and many other authors. To win a medal, the book must be published first in the United States, in English, and have an American illustrator. 
Being for picture books, there is a lot more emphasis on the quality of the art and how it integrates to and relays the story. Like the new, Barry the Caldecott has a main award and also honors or honorable mentions. The author slash illustrator who has won the most is Marsha Brown with three medals and six honors. The first winner in 1938 was Dorothy P. Lathrop for Animals of the Bible. The most recent was Vashti Harrison for Big. Onward to the Pulitzer Prize. Awarded by Columbia University, literature is just one of the categories for the Pulitzer. The award was created by newspaper magnate Joseph Pulitzer, who donated money to Columbia U in his will, with a stipulation that it be used to open a journalism school and create the prize in question. The first prizes were awarded in 1917. To be considered for the prize, works must be officially entered along with a fee. The literary Pulitzer was originally for a novel, but was changed after 1947 to a prize for fiction to include novellas, poetry, and etc. The first winner for fiction was Tales of the South Pacific by James Mishner. The most recent winners were Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, along with Trust by Hernan Diaz. A very literary award indeed is the Pushcart Prize. This prize was created by a large group of notable people, including Buckminster Fuller and Joyce Carol Oates. The Pushcart Prize honors the best poetry, short fiction, essays, or literary whatnot, published by small presses. Magazine and small book press editors submit up to six works they have featured. Anthologies of selected works are published annually ever since 1976. Winners include Vagabonds and Sundries by L. M. Browning, Ridgewell Stories by Joseph Ridgewell, and Leaving Yuba City Poems by Chitra Banerjee Diva Karuni. I messed that up, I'm sure, I'm so sorry. Next up, the Booker Prize. Originally called the Booker Prize for Fiction, then the Man Booker Prize from the sponsorship of the Man Group ended in 2019. And finally, just the Booker Prize, given to the best single work of sustained fiction written in the English language, published in the United Kingdom and or Ireland. This was changed in 2016 to include authors from around the world, although the move was subject to controversy and many sought to have it reversed. Begun in 1969 by the company Booker McConnell Limited, who sponsored the event at the time, a five-person panel, new every year, chooses the award winner. There is also an international Booker Prize given to a work of fiction translated into English and published in the United Kingdom or Ireland. Short story collections are eligible for this prize, but not the original Booker Prize. Authors receive a cash prize along with a trophy. The first winner was P. H. Newby in 1969 for Something to Answer For. The most recent winner was Paul Lynch for Prophet Song. And saving the big one for the last, the Nobel Prize for Literature. This was one of the prizes designated in 1895 by the will of Alfred Nobel and is awarded by the Swedish Academy. Winners get a cash prize, a medal, and a diploma. The diploma is awarded by the King of Sweden, or possibly the Queen if they have one. Currently they have a king. The prize is supposed to be given to a candidate whose work has bestowed the greatest benefit on mankind and be written in an idealistic direction, which kind of vague rules which have been given wide interpretations depending on the socio-political climate at the time. It took until 1986 for the swath of potential candidates to be widened from largely European and English language writers to the rest of the world. The prize is occasionally shared, but this is rare. Lists of nominees are kept secret and only released through a nomination database after 50 entire years. Former winners are allowed to nominate contenders. The first prize winner was Sully Prudhomme in 1901 for his various poetry and writings on the Franco-Prussian War, aesthetics, and philosophy. The most recent winner was John Fosse of Norway, the most performed Norwegian playwright after Ibsen, 
for his innovative plays and prose, which give voice to the unsayable. Now, again, those are just the ones I'm focusing on. Those are the biggies. Here is a list of all the rest of the honors for literature that I could find. Deep breath, so to speak. I'm not actually going to say them. Okay. <laughs> yes, um, a lot there to uh, look up and chew over. In any case, I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. I do hope you stuck around to the end because you found it informative and entertaining because I found that a lot of people don't watch my videos past the first minute and a half, so I must be doing something wrong and being boring, and I'm terribly sorry. But, I mean, I thought this was interesting, and again, hopefully you did too, if not I'll try and do better for you next time. Either way, I do hope you have a wonderful week and you keep working on that writing if that's what you're doing, if you're a writer. Because who knows, one of these prizes could be yours someday. I believe in you. Go get them, Tiger. See you next week. Bye.